all right so spires of ascension got increased to level 150 this means 10 extra stages and i saw a few people struggling with a certain stage uh, especially stage 145 so i'm gonna show you how i did mine i tried to keep the teams as free to play as possible but for some stages i just needed to use a net 502 so uh yeah for for the first two stages, uh, teams will mostly be free to play. After that, uh, I'll simply try to explain uh, the strategy that you need to use uh, for that particular stage. And yeah, starting with 141. So for this one, uh, the enemies are Karambit, uh, the Wind Griffon and Vigor, the Water Werewolf. For this one, it's pretty simple. Uh, you needed uh, mostly one thing, and that is a heal block, because the Water Werewolf does have a nasty heal, and he does use the heal pretty often, uh, so there's a low chance you'll be able to out DPS it. So you need a certain way to stop healing, so there are a few ways to do it. Uh, I did it with this team, and while I play, I will explain more. So with this, uh, the basic strategy is you need to use Celia as a soul link. Uh, at least I used uh, her in my choice. Uh, with that, she is able to permanently keep up the heal block on the enemies. After that, uh, I would recommend getting a little bit of weekend attack or something that would stop the damage from Karambit because. Uh, if he attacks a non-water element, you will have some trouble dealing with his DPS unless you have a certain safety option. For me, it was the water cleave because uh, first of all, he's water element and second of all, he has a lot of very useful uh, damage reduction effects. So he was able to out-sustain Karambit pretty easily. And yeah, apart from that, you just uh, defense break your opponent and slowly chip him away. So for that... Shushu gave me some healing. Uh, I think Shushu is by far the best option for healing as far as TRA goes because she also offers immunity which can allow you to survive a little longer. And for the third unit it's whatever. I chose Helia because she was probably the best unit that I had as far as free to play options go for increasing my damage. So she offered that defense break as well as additional branding. And yeah, apart from that, as you can see, the stage was pretty easy. Celia, Soul Link 1, uh, just spamming the heal block. If they cannot heal, they really can't do much to you. And that was it. Now, stage 142 uh, was the Light uh, Sylph Edetas, two Dark Howls and a Galleon. This one, again, is pretty simple. Uh, the main strategy behind this one is to just have immunity permanently up and they will not be able to do anything at all to you. So... Uh, have your Shushu on Soul Link, however, if you plan on ordering like I do right here, uh, I do want to note that you should buff up immunity manually when going into the fight, because Galleon will in most cases be able to defense break you before your Shushu uh, AI realizes that it needs to buff immunity, and if you do get defense broken, uh, they will do a lot of damage. So yeah, make sure to buff up at least once when entering the fight and after that uh, your Shushu will be able to keep up the buffs on order. And for other units, again I'm using Hel Helia to just increase my damage and Celia to uh, further like increase damage, heal me up, offer that extra level of branding. Heal block helps a lot here but it's definitely not necessary as the Dark House don't heal that much. Uh, however, I did find it useful as it just allowed me to clear the stage a bit faster. And yeah, as you can see, uh, just keep focus on the house first. After that, who you focus is up to you. I prefer to focus on Galleon because that way I was able to uh, take my Shushu off Soul Link since uh, the immunity wasn't that needed anymore. And with Helia on Soul Link slot, she was able to spam the defense break and branding that much more often. Now for 143, this is the team I used. Shushu on Soul Link again for that permanent immunity. Uh, they really only have a single strip on, I believe, the either the Light Captain or the uh, Water, what she called, Imaginite. Uh, but I noticed that in this whole match, my cleave has only been stripped once. So even though they have it, uh, I definitely recommend still keeping Shushu on Soul Link. 
that way you are able to protect yourself against all of the other debuffs that they have because uh, units like Shannon have a defense break and attack break, units like Brig have a defense break and attack break. And if you do receive that block beneficial effect, if you're able to cleanse it somehow, it will definitely help. I would say if you have a Juno right here, she would be perfect. Although they don't have many buffs, uh, you can use her to strip up that invincibility that Brig will have, as well as a Shannon will occasionally buff uh, her defense buff and attack buff on everyone so Juno would be really useful I try to not use Juno to keep it more free to play friendly but yeah uh, uh, for this one just focus on the hell lady because she is a reviver so you don't want to kill anyone uh, before you kill the reviver after that I would recommend focusing on the Shannon as uh, the defense buff will lower your damage a lot and the attack buff that she gives might uh, put your team in danger after those two are dead, uh, the match becomes pretty easy. Again, I used Water Cleave uh, to lower the damage from uh, Brig as well as the Water Magic Knight. That way they weren't able to kill me even with that defense break being up on me for like a minute or two. I believe I walked it off uh, to remove that defense break a bit later. Yeah, so I just walked it off until I lost the block beneficial effect, buffed up the immunity and finished off the fight. And the Windcat was there pretty much for damage only, Helia again only for the defense break. The only thing I really needed is Shushu, but if you have a Juno, do bring her, if not, I do recommend bringing another cleanser, as long as you have the damage, you should be fine. Now 144 was the stage where things got quite difficult, I would say. Uh, for this one, there are a lot of nasty units, so the Water Chimera will provoke you a lot. There is a Feng Yan that can buff her, uh, what's it called, a revenge buff and constantly defense break you. Artamel will keep buffing and doing a lot of damage and most importantly, Akroma, which will put that nasty uh, block beneficial effect effect. Yes, I said effect two times. Lovely. But yeah, basically for this one, I was not able to do it with a free-to-play team, so this is the team that I've used. Uh, Shushu, I still needed for that healing as well as immunity, even though they do have uh, ways to remove it, uh, it does still help. After that, Juno, of course, uh, you will need a stripper in most cases because they do have a lot of buffs. And uh, they also have some healing, so you do want to be removing that instead of just uh, going over it or tanking it in any way. Uh, Juno was the best option because she also offers cleanse and healing. Uh, if you do not have a Juno, uh, you may bring something like a Soha, maybe a Tiana to charge your ultimates a lot. Uh, after that, I do recommend getting Oblivion because uh, they do have some nasty units like uh, the Acroma, which you are not able to defense break because she will cleanse it and she will get defense buff right after. I tried the Sarian, but I uh, saw that the Water Magical Archer was a better option because she also has uh, ways to block the healing. She has that uh, recovery receive down debuff, as well as, yes, yeah, as you can see it landed that. And after that, uh, when she basic attacks, she will also land. Uh, the undead instead of the recovery receive down which will mean that the enemy is not able to heal at all and this prevents you from uh, keeping the stage going for a long time and yeah, after that uh, just finishing off the panda and the stage was over and I'm guessing a lot of you are coming uh, mainly for this uh, stage 145 I know that for some summoners it was a bit easier, but for Cleef, uh, people really struggled with it. I tried quite a few teams on this one, I was stuck here for like probably a good hour just trying to brainstorm a team. Uh, but basically the main idea behind this is uh, you will need an unreviable unit. You can try to go around it with uh, units that do Oblivion, uh, do buff strips, but really that's really pushing it and with an undervivable it will be way way easier and I really do recommend for just sticking with it. Uh, there are a few undervivable monsters uh, for the free to play ones there is the dark amazon which unfortunately I do not have so I couldn't try that one. Uh, there's also the wind lich I tried him I built him up level 70 full skill 
Trust me, don't use him. He's complete garbage. He does he doesn't do any damage pretty much. And it will be pretty much impossible to time uh, the anti-revive skill for the stage. Uh, if you have like no other options at all, sure, give him a shot. But yeah, uh, don't try the Wind Lich in my opinion. Uh, I used Punk Bake. His second skill when killed with it uh, will prevent revival. Uh, the reason I chose him over something like Beth is because his damage increases a lot. A lot as uh, enemies HP gets lower so whenever HP is below like 30% or something uh, as you can see like uh, the under is here if you kill with that skill it will also do additional lightning there uh, it receives defense penetration when the enemy is on low HP which allows you to do a lot more damage than you would with any other unit like uh, the wind lich and you're just simply able to set it up way more easily as you can see you just uh get an enemy low uh, the joker cannot heal uh, you can wait and walk around while uh, either your mana charges or your skill charges and just clear it with that team so for 146 i was able to get back to a more free to play friendly team shushu sile helia uh, this one was super simple, uh, the main caveat of this stage is that enemies have a lot of poison, so uh, a really simple way to counter it is to just permanently have Shushu immunity up. As you can see, uh, I did the mistake that I said with uh, one of the previous stages of not buffing right off the bat and letting Shushu AI buff for you. Do buff uh, immunity before going into the fight manually because uh, your Shushu will take some time to react and she will simply not be able to buff up in time and if enemies have any other debuffs apart from dots uh, it will be a little bit more difficult to deal with but this stage they have zero strips uh, they are not able to do any damage any debuffs to you at all so as long as you have immunity uh, you will have a very easy time dealing with the stages as you can see uh, pretty much a full auto don't even need to weaken attack on any of them because they don't exactly do damage they play around with uh, the poison more than the damage itself and yeah uh, just finishing off with the last opponents and the stage is pretty much over okay for 147 i was again not able to do it with a fully free to play team i had to take in a uh, devoted magical archer the reason i did that is because uh, she was able to do that consistent uh, basic attack damage and I tried this with the Sarian at first the problem the Sarian failed is I didn't realize the stats that the enemies have and if you do struggle with this stage and you are unsure why uh, there might be a reason why you're losing and it's these penguins I checked their stats uh, regularly uh, units in the Spirals of Ascension have like 35, 40, uh, evasion, this time the penguins actually had 80 and when I tried using my Tessarion who only has like uh, 110 precision or something, I just noticed that he was missing his basic attacks, it, it was constant evade, 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 evade. So I switched to a unit that has high precision, my magical eyes here is on like 160 at the moment and she was able to do the damage way more consistently as you can see. But apart from that, uh, the stage isn't too difficult. They do have a strip, uh, the dark, uh, what's it called, Velajul, whatever it's called, Archangel, right? Uh, he has a strip on his first skill. He can remove immunity as well as he can remove a, or what's it called, uh, a beneficial effect in general. It's only a single uh, strip, so it's not too difficult. So. Uh, once the light penguins are dead, and I do recommend focusing on them first because they cycle cooldowns a lot, uh, you can just finish off uh, the Archangel and the Mushrooms will be super easy to deal with as well. Uh, as you can see, Mushrooms actually have a very unique effect that only Mushrooms have, if you didn't know, and it is a precision down. This means that uh, that effect, uh, together with uh, the high evasion on the penguins, in most cases, uh, whoever is affected by the debuff will pretty much not be able to land any basic attacks at all. So yeah, be careful there, uh, bring either immunity or a cleanse, in my case immunity was enough, 
Apart from that, just bring a lot of damage, defense break, and you should be able to deal with this pretty easily, as you can see. Okay, 148, I would say this stage was one of the easier ones. Uh, there's really nothing difficult behind the mechanics. However, I did not have any free-to-play strippers, so I was forced to bring a more uh, pay-to-win team, per se. Yeah, so... With Juno, as long as you kill the Wind Undyne, uh, sh there will no longer be any uh, buffs and uh, the stage will pretty much be free. I do recommend bringing Thessarion together with you because these Dark Elementals have a very nasty passive where if they die, uh, they will explode. And once they explode, uh, they will do a lot of damage to you and if you're not careful or you do not have a cleanse to uh, cleanse the heal block, I believe. Yeah, it's a heal block. You will struggle a bit with healing, so Oblivion, of course, helps you to silence that passive, and you can use the Sardian for that. You can use the Ward and Magical Archer for that. Any other unit that gives Oblivion, really, I brought the Sardian because he had my uh, damage wounds equipped at that time, and the Oblivion was way more consistent than. Uh, the water magical archer and i do hope you have the side on yourself so uh, it shouldn't be some sort of a, a really difficult monster to find in your monster box most likely and yeah apart from that the stage was super easy as long as the undyne is dead uh, there is no immunity you're able to consistently apply that oblivion and clear the stage now for 149, at first the monsters actually looked very scary, but when I went into the fight I was surprised that it was quite easy actually. So uh, immunity is useful here, however they are able to strip and land uh, buffs through it, as you can see, especially the uh, Yon Hong, I believe she's called, the Light Sky Dancer. She's able to land that nasty uh, up to level 5 mana down. Or was mana cost up, I think. Uh, basically making your souling units super expensive. Uh, one mana extra for each level of the debuffs. Uh, so I made a small mistake of focusing on the light beetle before her. I do recommend focusing on her first. As long as you get rid of that, you will be in a way safer position. You will be able to spam uh, your mana skills way more often. And uh, the run will in general be easier, but I only realized that after I started the stage. And even then, as you can see, it really wasn't that difficult. Like, yeah, my Shushu heal cost 9 mana. But even then, uh, they aren't really doing too much damage. I'm not even using a Water Cleave, and they're simply not doing much. So, uh, yes, you're able to pretty easily tank it. If not, you can bring additional... Uh, debuffs like the AV, for example, who will weaken attack, weaken critical, and heal you uh, if you're struggling with uh, the tanking part. But apart from that, uh, pretty much order uh, strip you could bring for that light beetle if you intend on leaving him for later on is definitely not needed. I just had Juno uh, built up. I decided, eh, I mean, I'll cleanse a debuff or two with her, might as well use it, but uh, she's definitely not needed here. Apart from that, really simple stage, just do damage, and that's pretty much it. Okay, and the big 150. So this stage was probably the second hardest stage of uh, the whole 10 Spire compilation. Uh, the main reason behind it is, first of all, the Chivo uh, will not allow you to have that immunity, meaning that you're not able to protect yourself from the constant provokes that Rakan gives. I believe the... Uh, water, wait, does the water in Rami give provokes? I, I'm not even sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, you will want to kill Windy first, however you'll notice that it's gonna be very hard to kill him because you're constantly provoked. Uh, how I went about this is whenever my Juno was provoked, meaning that she is not able to strip Windy, what I would do is I basically would reposition myself behind Windy so that uh, since Rakan is a melee unit, whenever he walks towards me, he will eventually get next to the Windy, as you can see here, and whenever he gets close to the Windy, I will quickly start attacking them again. That means that even though Juno is provoked by the Rakan, whenever she hits the Rakan, she will also be hitting Windy. And as you can see, yeah, so whenever 
I get provoked, I deposition myself and in situations like this, as you can see, my Juno is able to hit all five of them and as long as you keep stripping and slowly chipping away uh, at that windy, you will be able to deal with it. She also helps if there are any uh, very sort of impactful debuffs landed on you, like the block beneficial effect buff or whatever. But yeah, once you kill the windy, the stage will become super simple. Uh, the turn order I recommend is uh, killing Windy first, then going for the Chivo. Once Chivo and Windy are dead, they don't really have too many useful buffs. They don't have any uh, strips, so you are able to permanently keep up your uh, immunity. And after that, it's just dealing with the rest of the debuffs. The Water Inogami will be annoying because he has that defense buff. But even then, as long as you were stripping everyone... Uh, consistently, uh, they will already be low. As you can see, the Dark Golem just dies by himself. Uh, the, what's it called, Rakan is also extremely low. So by the time you kill Windy, most of them will be dead. And after that, it's just finishing up with the rest of the units. As you can see, uh, the Water Inogami and the Pioneer. And yeah, uh, that was it for the stages. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.